that's the red that you want. You know, so you guys should also you guys should also remember that. So the more pigment, like, like for example, like right here, and when I was making the cast of this, I added like three scoops of brown, and look and look what it is. It's it's not brown. It's light brown. You know, so you guys gotta remember that. So um, basically, when I use silicone pigments. I'll be honest with you guys, I don't use paint brushes, because once again, you know, you're painting with something that's like liquid rubber, why would you use a paintbrush, unless it's dis disposable, but you know, still, usually what I use for um, painting or pigmenting with silicone is basically your own fingers, a toothpick, cotton buds, and whatever else you can find, you know, like for example, um, <clears throat> like for example, Freak Show 3 right here, as you guys can see. When, when you guys see this triangle makeup kind of thing, believe it or not, I didn't actually use a paintbrush, you know. I used a toothpick, I dipped it in, and, you know, I wrote, like, the upside down triangle, and, you know, I filled that in with red, be using my fingers, and, you know, so that's basically it, you know, not that hard. And what's cool about silicone pigments is that the way it feels, you know, if you guys get used to this texture, what you guys can do is you can, you guys can actually do some, you know, kick-ass smearing effects, you know, like like right here. See the see how the blue mouth or makeup kind of smears away. Yeah, so that's the power of silicone. And also, you guys can make it drip. You know, if you guys know how to do that. And I'll show you guys how to do that real soon. Um, what else? See, and also see how the blood, some you know, like blood smears on the white makeup. Yeah, so that's 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 just basically me um, smearing it, you know. So, so yeah, that's pretty much silicone. Oh, and um, I've actually never tried this before. And what you guys can do is, once again, you guys can go to smoothon.com, you know, you guys can order the, um, the, um, the silicone addit additive that makes it thick or thin. Now, if you guys make it thin, it will obviously make it to the point where it's like water, so you guys can paint with it easier, you know? If you guys make it thick, once this, once it's thick, you guys can actually mold shapes and you guys can add some, you know, weird ass shape to your mask if you want to, to make it bizarre. So, yeah, that's basically silicone pigmenting. And, um, so yeah, I'll, I'll start, you know, talking about how to actually paint a mask, you know, like different techniques and the different layers that you guys ought to remember. So, yeah. That's basically, you know, silicone and latex, pigments and paints. Okay, guys, um, mate, we're still on main step number five, which is painting, and right now I'm gonna explain to you guys and give you guys tips and facts about basically, you know, painting your mask or pigmenting it. Um, right now I want to talk about layers, you know. Now, when I mean layers, I mean, like, kind of like graffiti, you know. You guys got to know your layers if you, got, if you guys want to actually make your mask look realistic and kick-ass looking, you know. Like, for example, my Freak Show 3, my first silicone mask, which is also a full head. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of layers there. And what I mean by layers is basically the, the way it's presented to you right now. You know, so like for example, you got your flesh colored right here, and then on top of that you have the white makeup, and on top of the white makeup you got the blue make the blue mouth makeup, and what and on top of that you got the blood coming down. So that's so that's layers basically. Now you guys, some of you guys might understand this already, and some of you guys don't understand it. And right now I'm gonna explain to you that I'm gonna explain that to you guys. As you guys can see right here, like I said, when I um, when I was making the cast for um, the Sans Manifests, 
Um, what you guys really need to do is make the base color, you know. And what I mean by base color is basically the first color, like the, the first basic color that your mask will have. Like, as you guys can see, it's brown, so that's the basic color. Now, an, like, an example here, I'm painting Malfunction Death Machine. The base color here is, the, the base color here is light gray, you know. So, now, the important thing of making the base coat, or the base color layer, is basically this. Now, um, you guys probably, you guys probably haven't noticed, but... I don't know if you guys remember this mask. This is Gor um, Gorgasm Skull. You know, it's made like uh, I don't know, like f around January or something. So the base color here is take a guess. It's white, believe it or not. And the reason why it's white is basically, if you guys can see it, you know, there's like white streaks at, um, everywhere. And what that basically does is that the base layer basically shows up at many points, like the points that you guys haven't even, you know, bothered painting yet. So, without the base layer, you know, it will turn out like the color, the default color, is basically the default color for latex, you know. If you guys didn't do the base layer, especially if you guys are doing latex masks, it will show up as the default color of latex, and you guys don't want that. You know, it's gonna look unprofessional. So, yeah, it's basically the um, the p the first um, layer of painting a mask. You know, I can't really you know explain it in words, but once again, you know, the base layer is important because it, sh it shows up as like a like a color once you're done with your mask. Like right here, it's all like you know, like white right here, like the white streaks, and above the white is, you know, gray, black, copper, you know, like, that kind of stuff. So, yeah. So, some masks that I've done, it, does, it didn't really matter how, you know, like, whatever the, the, the painting layer, like, the first um, coat of the painting layer, like, for example, this one right here. Let's see if I can. Alright, so this is underskin. Um, this is underskin rot paint job, rain of terror paint job. As you can see, it's it's like neon green, and I'm aware of that. Now, the reason why it's neon green is because that's the color that I want to present people that they will see, even though it's you know covered in a lot of you know other pigments and stuff. If that makes sense, you know. Like right now, seriously, I can't really explain the import the importance of having a um, the first the first um, color for for layers. But I'll show you guys as I progress the importance of doing that. You know. So all I'm telling you guys now is make sure you guys add color. It doesn't matter what color. At least make sure it's a color that corresponds to your idea of the mask and follow along with it. So that's the first layer, which is once again the base layer. Now, so base or you guys can call it prime, it doesn't matter. So right after the prime layer, you guys can start on the secondary prime layer, which is basically you know, kind of like the same color but tinted or darkened in some in some other way. You know, like for example, my Freak Show th uh, Three silicone mask. The base, the the base color for this is flesh, as you guys can see. Now the secondary layer, the layer after the the um the prime or the first layer. The the um the second color after that is basically dark gray, believe it or not. And I don't know if you guys can see this in the camera, but there's like tints of dark gray along right here you know the reason why I put dark gray there